Yo, what's going on everyone? Brian here from Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today I am going to share my top 10 favorite enemies from Borderlands. Now I know you are probably wondering, why the hell are you talking about Borderlands when there's a Borderlands 2 and the Borderlands prequel? Well, the answer is simple. With my balls busy schedule of working and drinking, I have a huge backlog of games that I still need to play or beat. And if you don't like that excuse, then accept the fact that I am just lazy. So anyway, I finally beat Borderlands, and guess what? I loved it. From the weapons, to the humor, and obviously based on the title of this video, the enemies. Now like any good RPG or shooter game, you will have a lot of different enemy types to choose from, and Borderlands is no exception. So one last thing I want to mention before jumping into this list is, one, I did not include any of the DLC enemies in this list. Why? Well, it's simple. I just haven't downloaded them yet. And two, for all you people that are worried about spoilers, I am not going to be including the final boss in this list. So before you go commenting and saying, why the hell wouldn't you include the final boss? I just kind of feel like that's a cop out on a list like this, and it's too easy to put him on here. And I didn't want to spoil the game for anyone. So don't you worry, guys. Anyway, let me shut the hell up and just get started with this list. Number 10. Starting us off is one of the first bosses you will encounter, and that is Bonehead. As one of the leaders of the bandits, this skull collecting voodoo practitioner will put up a pretty decent fight, and once he dies, he drops an excellent early weapon, the Bone Shredder. Now, if these aren't enough to convince you of his place on this list, he also has a helmet made of bone, and I think but I'm not sure he may be a vampire. Just listen to his demands for blood and you be the judge. Blood! 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 Number nine. Up next is the Burning Psycho, and let me sum this up real fast for you. This particular enemy may look like most of the psychos or bandits that you fight throughout the game, except they set themselves on fire before charging you. Now that takes some serious balls. You have balls. I like balls. And besides, everyone knows that fire makes everything better. It's a scientific fact. I'm an engineer, I know these things. Not to mention, they have some of the funniest voice acting in the game. So, yeah. Think about it. Number 8. Coming in at number 8, we have the queen of all the spider ants. None other than Queen Tarantella herself. She not only has an ass ton of support enemies surrounding her when you first approach, but she can jump high as hell, spit ass at you, and once she dies, a whole bunch of smaller spider ants burst from her. And let's not forget the little fact that she is the largest spider ant in the entire game. Now, some of you may say, well, what about King Arakab? Well... I thought about putting him on this list and then realized that this douche nozzle allowed his woman to be killed like a little bitch. And then you have to draw him out of hiding using her abdomen. Now that's some coward ass shit right there. So, I say all hail the queen. Number 7. Coming in at over 20 meters tall and over 20,000 tons, we have the king of the monsters, God's... Uh, uh oh, sorry, I mean Skagzilla. You can understand my confusion. Let me set the scene for you. As you approach this odd arena, you are greeted with a terrible roar. Just listen. And then, you're left all alone to face off against the largest Skag in the entire game. Although Skagzilla may not be the most difficult opponent and his patterns are pretty predictable, any large creatures that are based off of a Godzilla knockoff will earn a spot on this list. <clears throat> hint, hint. And let's not forget, they even included the badass beam attack. So, number seven can be none other than Skagzilla. Number six. So this next entry may be a bit bizarre, but let me explain. Scrappy is this poor little skag pup that has a buzzsaw on his neck that you're asked to the rescue from some bandits by Crazy Earl. Who's Crazy Earl? Well, this is Crazy Earl. So, after you rescue him, you figure that the two of you are BFFs for life. So you can imagine my surprise when I return to Crazy Earl's junkyard and see Scrappy all grown up, only to be a fucking attacked by this backstabbing ass pimple. Not only does he catch you off guard, 
but he has this long range attack reminiscent of the liquors from Resident Evil, and he can quickly charge you and take a lot of your life away. So, unfortunately, you're gonna need to put this mutt down, little bastard. Number five. All right, already up to number five. And remember the hint I just gave you about giant monsters and Godzilla references? Well, surprise, surprise, number five is none other than Mothrak. Now, to actually get to fight Mothrak, you're gonna have to go near the Lost Cave. And nearby, there's gonna be this little, best way I'm gonna describe it is tribal circle, where there's three torches that you need to light. Once you light it, oh man, Mothrak makes her epic appearance. Flying in, you're gonna see her from a distance, but damn, can you tell this bitch is huge. She comes towards you, you don't know what to expect. You know she's based on Mothra, so maybe shit's gonna drop from her wings, and then boom. You're hit with an ass ton of fireballs, so you better be in some type of vehicle and moving your ass off, because you will die fast. Once you kill her, though, you are left with one of the biggest goddamn carcasses, and it just so happened this one landed on me, and a whole bunch of loot. Mothrak, she is just badass, and easily one of the most entertaining and interesting boss fights you will get in Borderlands. Number four. Number four is yet another giant monster, and this time, it is the Rack Hive. You start with this awesome comic book cutout intro shot that sets the mood of just how epic your upcoming fight is gonna be. Set in an open flat plane, you battle against this walking mammoth-like creature who just so happens to have dozens of flying racks protecting it and a face that looks like a vagina. Now, I am not trying to be vulgar, but come on. The people at Gearbox know exactly what they were doing when they create this creature. The battle itself is pretty intense as you're trying to deal with this walking behemoth and you're getting hit at different angles from all these flying assholes. You don't have a lot of time to react, so you gotta make all your shots count. When it dies, you are left with a disgusting carcass and plenty of good loot. An epic boss battle like this and the crude humor cements the Rack Hive's place on this list. Number three. You know that you're a badass when you sit on a throne and have an army of bandits along with two personal bodyguards fight to defend you, and yet you are still the most badass one in that area. Who am I referring to? None other than Baron Flint, self-proclaimed leader of the bandits. He's willing to send waves of enemies to die and then sends in his personal bodyguards, Hans and Franz. Yes, this is an obvious nod to SNL, and I know a lot of people today are probably annoyed by the commercial with Aaron Rodgers, but still, that gained some points in my book just for the humor alone. But aside from just the humor aspect, these guys are legit badass. Hans has a giant sword attached to his arm, and Franz will repeatedly shoot at you from a distance, so they're a sweet pain in the ass. But once you defeat Hans and Franz, Baron will come down off that throne and attack you with his modified boomstick, which acts kind of more like a grenade launcher. And yes, when I say boomstick, I'm referring to the shotgun made popular by the Evil Dead series character, Ash. Anyone that's deemed worthy of carrying around a boomstick and being a self-proclaimed leader of a group of crazy-ass bandits like this, you know they're going to score high on any list. Groovy. Number two. Number two is another leader of the bandits and one of the funniest yet most badass video game characters ever. I'm referring to, of course, Sledge. This massive brute is a deranged bandit whose method of attacks are either pummeling you with his hammer or blasting your balls off with his specialized shotgun. Putting those factors aside, just look at this guy. With a customized welder's mask with a goofy grin on it, this Bane-like villain has made a throne of his own out of the bones of what looks like a T-Rex or a dragon. And you know that it was something that he killed with that hammer. You just know it. Combine all that with a ton of comedic yet simple one-liners, and you will understand why he managed to edge out Baron Flint. Plus, I really love using his shotgun, as it is unreasonably powerful at close range, yet a total bust from a distance. Sledge, like his shotgun, is one of a kind, and cement it as number two on this list. Number one. And finally, my number one choice will reveal the true level of my immaturity.
Coming in at number one is the one and the only Midget Shotgunner. Yes, I am serious. This little guy encompasses the true spirit of Borderlands all in one small package. Although the sounds coming from them are not exactly translatable, you can understand exactly what they mean with each grunt and groan. They are always willing to charge you alone or with a crowd. Their shotgun is dangerous at close range, and yet you cannot help but laugh when they appear on screen. Don't get me wrong, they can be dangerous, but when then something happens as they are trying to kill you, and it is one of the best animations I have ever seen in a first-person shooter. I swear, the first time I saw this, I almost spilled my beer. Naturally, I had to have my own fun with this, so I wanted to see how far they would go and what would happen if they shot me near a cliff. And damn! Now that is dedication, willing to shoot themselves off a cliff just to try and kill you. I already admitted I am immature, but watching them fall down from that shotgun blast will never get old to me. Bravo to whoever created the Midget Shotgunner and gave us this comedic gold. As always, thank you everyone who checked out our video, and be sure to give us a thumbs up or share our video with your buddies if you enjoyed it. We have plenty of other videos for you guys to check out if you're bored or just need something to do while you're drinking your beers, so make sure you subscribe to us. Let us know what you think of this list, and let us know who would you have included or excluded. Until next time, guys, cheers.